What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. Alistar is one of the most iconic and memorable champions in the support role, especially when it comes to League of Legends history. He seems to always have kind of just been a power force in the meta, no matter what season it is, whether it's season 3, season 5, just about all the seasons there are, Alistar seems to have been just such a dominant force, and the playmaking potential of his WQ combo has always been so awesome and allowed him to be a dominant force in really just about every meta. And although he might have fallen in and out of favor over the years here and there, he was definitely very important to early League of Legends. In fact, Alistar as a champion arguably inspired the first real meta ever in League of Legends. And so today I kind of wanted to take a look back at the early design and gameplay of Alistar way back in the alpha, the beta, and in season one of League of Legends, and kind of just get a fun little visit and maybe a nostalgic throwback to the early days. So if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button or let us know in the comment section below and be sure to subscribe for some more videos. Now, Alistar was actually one of the original 17 champions designed in the game when it was first playable in February of 2009. This was during the alpha stage. He also possessed one of the first ever skins in the game, which was Black Alistar, which you got as a bonus for pre-ordering the physical copy of the game. I think it cost about $30 at the time. Now today, Black Alistar is one of the rarest and most expensive skins you can find in the game as a whole, even though it's just kind of a recolor, because, well, the thing is that nobody really wanted to pay $30 to pre-order a game that you could play for free. Either way though, let's jump into his gameplay at the time. Early Alistar went through a variety of different kit changes, and they were all just about equally ridiculous. So Alistar's original kit actually had his current passive today, Triumphant Roar, on his E, and his passive instead at the time gave him bonus health. His ultimate also removed all crowd control effects and made him entirely immune to magic effects for up to 16 seconds at max rank. And this wasn't enough apparently, as they also added 80 bonus attack damage for the duration of that ultimate, and he had a 70% damage reduction effect on it as well. If this wasn't enough, his Q was also a, almost a 3 second stun, which is only 1.5 seconds a day, and his W also had a stun that was a quarter of a second longer than it is now. He could just pop his ultimate, CC you up, down, north, south, all pretty much all the directions he wanted, and there was just about nothing you could do about other than to just not be near him. He could also W minions, which was fun, especially when you hit some misclicks, or better yet, just fake out some headbutts or use it as a gap closer. Riot decided bonus health was a really lame passive though, so they eventually replaced it with percent bonus damage increase to towers and a damage reduction from towers. And the damage reduction portion was just so insane because it made him just a monster when it came to ganking. He could just tower dive everyone and he could headbutt people all over the place and it was insane. And so that damage reduction portion didn't last too long and it was removed. But the damage increase would be his passive up until April of 2011. This passive allowed for some pretty hilarious builds because you could just stack attack damage, walk up to a tower, use your ult, and then just kind of kill the tower in three hits 10 minutes into the game because you had 60% bonus damage. And when he did happen to have the damage reduction on his passive, turrets really just couldn't touch Alistar at all, especially if he uses ultimate too, and it just let him tower dive pretty much whenever he wanted. This in conjunction with the old summoner spell of Fortify, which was a buff that made your towers invulnerable and attack twice as fast, and Promote, which was basically just the banner of command active, and you could keep your turrets pretty healthy while steamrolling the opponent's buildings, leading to some insane strategies. Now these weren't common use summoner spells at the time so it was kind of more of just a hypothetical troll build but it was pretty funny and overall just really crazy. So although Alistar had some opportunities for some really hilarious troll builds with his out of place passive at the time, he was also just an insanely powerful champion in actual games, especially by the time players actually figured out the right and most powerful way to optimize his abilities, of course the infamous QW combo. By season 1, teams actually designed an entire strategy around Alistar as a whole. They would run only one champion in each lane and then a jungler, and then their fifth champion would be Alistar, a tanky support type who would would just roam the lane ganking non-stop, pushing, doing anything to help out the teammates really. And in this case, Alistar wasn't really getting much gold or experience from doing this, although at the time there were several gold per 10 items who would give you a passive gold gain every 10 seconds so you could get some level of income, but the true goal of the strategy was to try and just snowball your main carries, give the team a significant advantage, and Alistar was at the forefront of this. He's the one that made this entire strategy possible, and for many patches, Alistar just totally single-handedly dominated 
to the meta all by himself. And we even saw this strategy take place at the Season 1 Worlds, and over time as Alistar got nerfed here and there just a little bit, other support champions started to pop up in this role. You saw champions like Tarek and Janna try to fill the role as Alistar, but they were just never quite as good. His tower pushing passive along with the rest of the kit was just so good for this strategy. You know, he could walk into a lane, gank the laner with a QW combo, or even just push them into the opponent with a W if he had a nice flank, heal his laning teammates with his E, walk up to the tower, slap it a few times, chunk it pretty hard, and just go right next to the other lane. The pressure that the incredible, unkillable cow put on the enemy team was just so massive, and he quickly became the premier support roaming champion. That was what the strategy was called really, the roaming support. And at the time, he was honestly probably the best champion in the game. Maybe he wasn't the best in a vacuum, but based on the meta, he certainly had it all. And eventually over time, Alistar would get nerfed, and nerfed again, and nerfed again, and again, and again, and eventually after a series of nerfs, it of course allowed other supports to roam viably like Tark and Janna especially were the most memorable ones, but even then, Alistar was still on top after all the nerfs. He was a pick ban for about 90% of the games in Season 1 Worlds, and that was after he had been nerfed so many times, until finally, the Season 1 Worlds changed the meta, and the 80 carry support bot lane meta became the new thing in that tournament, and for, well, the rest of League of Legends from then on out pretty much. By this time, Alistar was massively nerfed from where he was in the beta and in the alpha stage, but still a great champion forever immortalized as the best champion in the first meta for League of Legends. So hope you guys enjoyed our little video today taking a look back at the first meta for League of Legends and really just beta Alistar in general. If you guys enjoyed the video, definitely hit that like button, comment maybe who you want to see next for another kind of video like this and if you enjoyed, I kind of wanted to just try out the format, see what everyone thought. Either way, thanks for watching, subscribe if you want, and I'll see you guys next time.